Greetings viewers. We are here with yet another variant of the Wingsung 601. This is the Wingsung 601A. Now, if you remember, way back when, uh, I did a review of this pen, which is the original Wingsung Model 601. This has a hooded nib, just like a Parker 51, also just like a Parker 51. It has a diaphragm-based vacuumatic filling mechanism. Um, it also has an ink window, which is, which is really, really nice. Um, now, this pen came in two versions. They were both called the 601, <clears throat> but there's this version, which uses the diaphragm-based uh, vacuumatic uh, system. Here's a demonstrator version of it, to uh, so we can literally demonstrate it. So you you push here, the diaphragm extends; it expels air out of the uh, uh, out of the pen, and the ink will then bubble up through a breather tube. And you have to do this uh, you do this a couple of times, and um, uh, the pen will fill. Now. Interestingly enough, it came. they came out with a variant of this, also called the 601. They didn't change the number system. Unfortunately, this one's full of ink, so I can't demonstrate it for you, but uh, it's the same principle. You push on it, but instead of the diaphragm, it's got a plunger and a spring. It, it's virtually the identical principle, but essentially the um, spring tension is provided by a spring itself rather than a rubber di um, diaphragm moving back and forth, and it has a, sort of a piston type plunger mechanism um, that uh, that works. So the, the, these pens fill quite effectively. Um, this is the, uh, the the variant of the 601. We'll call it like the, the piston plunger version. We have the original vacuum diaphragm version, um, which is this one as well. Um, at first glance, this pen looks a lot like a Wingsung 616. You, you know, they look almost identical. They both have the same hooded nib. This one has a slightly smaller ink window, but the difference is, unlike this very, very nice filling mechanism, this pen has absolutely an atrocious filling mechanism. It's a um, aerometric, built-in aerometric filler, which is literally my, my least favorite filling mechanism. So, world of difference on what's going on on the inside between the um, 616 and the 601. So, where does that take us to our 601A? So a couple of big differences between the 601A and the 601. So let's let's bring this uh, 601 out here. So the main difference is the nib. So this 601A has a wrap around barrel type nib, two tone, whereas this pen has a inset uh, hooded um, um, not inset nib, sorry, hooded hooded nib. Um, and the, uh, there's obviously a couple of small cosmetic differences. This pen has, this particular 601A has this uh, nice blue jewels on both ends of the pen. Here's a, another 601A uh, that uh, has a white jewel on the end and uh, nothing on the other end. Um, and obviously the cap finish is, is obviously quite different. This has this sort of nice machined texture finish uh, as well. So um, that's sort of the Wingsung 601 type product offering uh, as we see it. Uh, Size-wise, these are pretty typical pens. Here they are compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. And as you can see, they are fairly comparable lengthwise at least to um, this pen here. Now, uh, weight-wise, this particular variant weighs 24 grams. That's gonna vary somewhat based on the, um, the cap material, the cap finish, uh, the jewels, etc. but that's the ballpark, 24 gram um, uh, pen. Uh, it says, it's got some Chinese characters, which presumably I'm gonna say, I'm gonna guess say Wing Song. It says 601A and made in China along the edge of the cap. It has a Parker Arrow style clip, which um, should uh, look quite familiar to any of you. It's a nice functional uh, springy uh, clip. And as we said, it's got the same identical matching jewels on both ends ends. Um, the, uh, this 601A, however, does not only has the one jewel 
on the cap end. So you have to just pay attention to the particular variant of 601A that you are going after. And as we said, um, it's got a really nice uh, ink window, one of the nicer, more functional ink windows that I've seen, frankly. Um, it's got a small clutch ring here. And the nib, as we said, is this wraparound style nib that says made, it has Chinese characters. It's a two-tone nib and it says made in China in large uh, letters. Um, now, now one thing that's interesting about these vacuumatic type pens, even the old um, Parker vacuumatics is that sometimes they could be a little challenging to open up and clean. So Wing Song did uh, something quite nice with these. They made these, uh, Parkers have sort of these threads here that you have to have a special tool to screw onto the threads, grip it, and then unscrew the filling mechanism. Wing Song went one better. They just basically have this hex nut uh, around the base of the filling mechanism, which will uh, allow you to put sort of, if you have a kind of, kind of like a plastic wrench, etc., cetera, um, or any sort of gripper that's probably not a metal tool because that probably be the plastic, but sort of a plastic coated pliers would work well, etc. you can grab on here and twist that off. Lately, with the 601A pen, they have been shipping this nice little tool. So depending on which vendor you buy your 601A from, it may include this particular little tool or it might not. In either case, I do see vendors on eBay who are selling these tools um, a la carte, so to speak. So what this is, is just a perfect little tool for removing the filling mechanism. You just simply slide it on the end it engages with that nut there and then you can simply turn and the entire filling mechanism will come out. There we go. And um, you can then silicone grease that, um, clean the pen out, do whatever sort of adjustments you might want to make, and then just screw it right back, and then tighten it back down again with this tool, and you are back in business. So they really did a pretty nice job with this um, with this uh, with this little tool. Um, again, it's not 100% necessary. If you want to do repairs on these pens, um, like I said, um, uh, what I did prior to getting this tool when I wanted to open up one of these was um, use the um, pliers with um, nylon jawed pliers worked quite well just to grab onto it gently and twist it off. And this tool works with both the 601 and the 601A in both the uh, vacuumatic um, uh, diaphragm filling mechanism as well as the, um, the uh, uh, spring-loaded pump filling mechanism. They have the identical nut on the end to remove it. So um, again, you may want to inquire uh, about who, if you're buying one of these pens, if the vendor is including the tool. If they are not, like I said, there are vendors on eBay who are selling this for a very reasonable price. And if you have in these pens in any kind of quantity, this is a very, very useful tool to have. Okay, enough about that. Let's get to writing because as we always said, pens were meant to write. Let's see how this guy writes right now. Okay, folks, what we're writing with here is a wing song. Uh, model 601A. And this has a fine, and I may even classify this as an extra fine, it is not labeled. Um, steel nib. Now, here's the thing. This is not the smoothest nib. Um, it's, I've got a bit of feedback. But, 
it's an amount that I would consider acceptable. I might at some point in the future, if I'm just sitting around not doing anything, uh, spend a few minutes and smooth this out. But in general, I'm pretty happy with this. It's got a decent amount of flow, um, etc. Um, it's it's not bad for a nib this uh, this fine. In terms of flex, you can squeeze an iota of flex out of it, but um, not really very much um, at all. But I'm pleased with the with the flow and the consistency of it. It could be smoother, but um, I'm not going to complain uh, terribly. This is a fairly inexpensive sub $20 uh, pen. I think the look of it, by the way, I haven't mentioned that, is really terrific. This particular model, 601A, is quite, quite nice. Obviously, if you want a 601A and you want something a bit less flashy uh, and conservative, you can't get less flashy than something like this one. But um, this looks like a, a this looks like an old Parker my my uh, my dad would have had in his jacket pocket in like 1967 or something. So this one is really a quite uh, quite conservative. Uh, a, um, a pen. This one obviously a bit flashier, but I really like the look of it. I like the color of the material. I, li I really like these these blue jewels. I just think look great. Um, the trim, everything. I just really think they did a pretty nice job with this. Um, and it writes pretty well. Like I said, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna complain um, about the way it writes. Um, it does have a certain degree of wetness, so I think it's got that going for it, which I think is which I think is um, is pretty nice. So I think that's pretty much what we want to say about this uh, Wingsung 601A. Let's talk about this ink a little bit now, shall we? Okay, this is a very nice ink from Pilot. This is Oroshizuku. Jaku. And this is sort of a basically an aqua color, I would say. Sort of a teal, bluish green aqua color. Um, I picked this one for this pen because I thought it matched the pen. Not spot on, but I think did a decent job of matching the pen. By the way, um, one complaint I do have, these are great, like, deep, deep blue jewels. I would have liked them to have done something more to match the jewel to the barrel a little better. This is a bluish green, whereas this is just a very, very deep, deep green. I don't know. Just might have been a little nicer to match those a little better, but hey, what do I know? Um, in any case, this is a very typical Oroshizuku ink in terms of just ink quality, flow, consistency, uh, dry time, um, uh, everything about it. As usual, it comes in your classic Oroshizuku heavy glass, really pretty bottle um, that uh, just is a, just is great. Um, these are not the cheapest inks in the world, but sometimes you can get a, a deal on them. So. Be a careful, careful shopper. Um, that's how it looks on this uh, Rodeo paper. Let's just take a quick look to see how it looks on Tomoe River. Okay, folks, as we said before, this is a Roshizuku. Ku. Jaku. And um, again, really, really nice, nice ink. Uh, interesting sort of bluish, greenish, ocean blue, ocean blue, green, aqua, teal, whatever you want to call it, color. Um, but um, I, I, I'm happy with it. I think it looks good. I think it looks good on the roadie. I think it looks really good on Tomoe River. But then again, doesn't every ink look great on Tomoe River? Come on, let's be serious. Um, in any case, that is this ink. I like it. And I think that is going to be this episode. As always, I thank you 
so, so much for watching. If you have any comments, please leave them. If you have suggestions, please leave them. Please subscribe. And when you do subscribe, that little icon that looks like a bell next to the subscription button, click that as well. That way you'll get notified whenever I post a new video. You're definitely going to want to know about that. And of course, as always, until next time, have a great day. Bye-bye.